Welcome to the Pat Mayo Experience presented by DraftKings 2021 Week 7 DraftKings Picks and Preview Plus the play, the best plays lineup, which continues to do like all right every single week, which is just stunning news. Maybe playing the best plays is the way to go. Probably not to win giant GPPs, but hey, keeps cash, and so we're on to something here with the shitter guy lineup as we go through everything. Ben Raza from Osmo.com will join me here in a moment, but I do want to let you know to smash the like button to the episode. Subscribe to Mayo Media Network for the love of God, sub to the network. Get us to 30,000 subscribers on YouTube. Rate and review the podcast, and in the comment section, give me your favorite cheap play at any position this week to help us fill out our lineups. I'll scan through. Maybe I'll even make a lineup with some of these guys. Who knows? Because God knows I need the help. Additionally, all of the cheat sheets will be up on DKNation.com starting on Friday. Sub to the newsletter. That's free. That's in the description. So you get everything just sent to you just once on the weekend. It'll be like Saturday morning and boom, you'll have the full injury report, all the cheat sheets, everything you need to know, plus all of the player notes that go along with it. And if you just want to run optimals or make custom projections or use player props, RunTheSims.com has a new offer on right now. And if you go to RunTheSims.com slash Mayo, you'll get yourself a discount on that. Ben Raza, we're talking football, not golf, for the first time in a year. What's up? What's up, man? Yeah, it was a good week to do it. Uh, golf was a little suspect this week, so I'm happy to hop on and uh, nice talk a little 10 game slate here. Well, let's jump right into it and get to the running backs on the main slate. That's what we're talking today because you know there's 10 games on. It's a millionaire slate. You you won the millionaire yet this year or what? No, haven't won the millionaire this year or other years. Uh, haven't even been remotely close, but I get the Mayo bump this week. This is probably my best chance. It worked for Leone last week. He he won 20K in some tournament. I mean, people just come on the show. Andy Lack was on golf before that. All of a sudden, he's the new editor at Score Magazine. So congratulations mm-hmm. to Andy. Everyone's getting the PME bump besides me. It's weird. Yeah, that's how it works. I, I Sorry to say, but I'm very excited for that. I uh, could use it. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it doesn't work every single time, but you did one. You did win six figures being on with Patrick Reed at the Masters. That's true. Uh, it was all thanks to you. So <laughs> we're gonna see what we can do here. Yeah, interesting week. I do like. I wanted to ask you this actually. Are you a fan of the bye weeks? Like, I personally really think the the reduction uh, from like thirteen or fourteen games makes a huge difference in terms of the DraftKings slate for the week. Yeah, I like it. I, I like just a couple less games. I think that it's just, it makes building lineups so much more difficult. And if you're a GPP player, I think that really leans towards your advantage because you're used to making uncomfortable decisions in your lineup and knowing that this loser you put in might end up scoring three or four points, but you're going to have to do that this week. It's not like you can, it's it's not like week one where it's like, oh yeah, this guy had 4,200. He's probably going to score like 25 points. I'll just play him. You, You don't really have that anymore. No, I love that. I I feel like I tend to do better on lower scoring weeks overall. Uh, Like if if the winning GPPs are like 260, forget it. But if we're hovering around 200, uh, that's more my speed. And I think weeks like this actually play to that. Well, here's a decision a lot of people are going to have to make. Derrick Henry is the most expensive running back on the board by 1700 bucks over Aaron Jones. And then he's the only guy in the 5000s. Then you have Saquon Barkley at $6,700. He's probably not going to play, but we don't know that for sure yet. Then the rest of the sixes is pretty interesting. You got Daryl Henderson, Joe Mixon, Leonard Fournette, Cordero Patterson at $6,300. Who would have thunk? Josh Jacobs, Chuba Hubbard, and DeAndre Swift. Like, it's a pretty loaded safety tier in the 6,000. But, like, in my overall, like, season-long rankings this week, I have Henry at one and Daryl Henderson at two. I would expect those two to be the highest-owned two guys on the slate. And if you want to start your lineup like that, I think it's going to be super common. But that does seem like your path of least resistance this week at the running back position. No doubt. I mean, what's there to say with Derrick Henry? It's unbelievable. He gets stronger as the game goes on. It seems like, you know, how could a guy with limited to no passing upside, a couple targets here and there, get there? But when you fall in the end zone three times, seemingly every week, uh, and he, gr- he draws, I don't know, one of the top two or three best matchups in terms of run defense. Kansas City can't stop anybody. It's great to build with him. It's just a huge opportunity cost. I like some top-end quarterbacks. I definitely like some top-end receivers. 
that's my biggest concern is I just don't know if I'll have room for Derrick Henry on a lot of my lineups. Weirdly, and it's tough to do this with the really expensive players, but I'm sorting by the run the Sims points per dollar projections right now at running back. And Derrick Henry is still inside the top four, despite being 9,500 bucks. It, I mean, it just shows when he has volume, like you're going to expect here, Tennessee, of course, they, you know, they've clung to life here. Only five and a half point home dogs, definitely live to stay in the game live to get Henry a ton of carries. I get it. I just think when you click him in, it really changes your overall build significantly because if you don't use him, as you mentioned, you're either paying $1,700 less for Aaron Jones or upwards of $2,500 less for any other player. So there's a big difference between playing him and not. So the ceiling projection for Derrick Henry is going to be like six to seven to eight points higher than any other running back on this slate. So talk me out of using Derrick Henry in lineups. Like what is the case to not use him? Is that he's not the number one running back by like fifth. Like, cause that's what you're hoping to fade. If you have Derek, if you fade Derrick Henry, it's not that he has to have a bad game. It's that he can't be the best scoring running back by like 16 points on the slate. Yeah. I think that's really what you're looking at is okay. You've got, obviously you need to fill multiple running back positions. There is a group of players in the mid sixes and the fives that can keep contact with him. You have a lot of outs there. And if Derrick Henry only outscores them marginally, or he just has a somewhat off game. You've picked up thousands of dollars in salary. And the difference to me between the Devonte Adams of the world and mid range receivers is so much bigger than the difference between Derrick Henry and these mid range to upper mid range running backs. So that's really the case to be made. He's unbelievable. He could break the slate. We've seen it time and time again, but it's not as simple as just plug and play. If you were playing like single entry or cash, you would probably play Derrick Henry. But for giant GPPs, I don't think full on fade is the way that you want to go. No. But I, I think that if you just want to start with Daryl Henderson, although he is going to be incredible, you probably can't play them both together if you want to. I mean, you'll have a unique lineup, but when you're talking about like unique builds and trying to make it like a, you don't want to make it like a 3v3 versus 20,000 other people. Henry and Henderson does seem like the very logical starting two, though. Oh, there's no doubt. And Daryl Henderson. I mean, he's another one, just fantastic volume. It was good to see. They absolutely crushed the Giants from start to finish. He still got plenty of work. So I don't worry about that. Even in a game where they're over two touchdown favorites against the Lions, he's a reasonable price. The injuries seem to be in the past here. It's hard not to like him, and you're certainly getting a better price point. Are we at the point now where Aaron Jones has been so underwhelming for consecutive weeks that now no one is going to play him, and this is the week he scores four touchdowns? He does occasionally score four touchdowns. There's no doubt about that. I definitely think he's going to be lost. I just do. You, how much do you worry about a guy like AJ Dillon? I do, especially because the volume for him has been going up in each of the past three weeks. He's up to like 45% of the carries, which is worrisome. But this happens to Aaron Jones every single year, whether it's A.J. Dillon, whether it was Jamal Williams. We'd have this games where it's like, oh, man, he's like a split time running back. And then one week he'll just come. It's like, oh, he has 25 carries for 250 yards. It's like, OK, he he's one of the few running backs on the slate. Like I see someone like Josh Jacobs at $6,200. I really don't know what's going on in the Raiders' backfield. All of a sudden, Drake is getting more involved again. Peyton Barber might end up with a few touches in this game. They're throwing to Jalen Rocket Richard again ever since he came back from the IR that Jacobs could have three touchdowns and still not be the highest scoring running back on the slate. At least when Aaron Jones goes off, he is the best running back. That's why he's constantly priced up like this. It just feels like everyone's been taking an L using him lately and they're just going to be like, you know what? I would rather pay $1,700 more for Derrick Henry, or I'd rather pay $900 less for Daryl Henderson because he's been way better. No, no doubt about it. I think that's going to be the sentiment. The good thing about Aaron Jones is certainly he can contribute across the board. He's going to get you targets, carries, touchdowns, hopefully. I just worry about game script in the sense the Packers are another big favorite. It's not to the level of a team like the Rams, but if they're in full control, does A.J. Dillon garner a ton? And does someone like Aaron Jones have a pedestrian workload. I think that's pretty likely in a lot of ways, but at the same time, it doesn't rule him out because as you're mentioning, low probability outcome, but he is one of the guys that has true top end ceiling form and that, that makes him appealing, but still not a priority. Of the 6K guys, where do you think that you would go? Obviously Henderson, probably the safest, but all these guys are kind of volume monsters and we don't know what's going on with Cordero Patterson. He out 
carried Mike Davis in the London game. They went on by. Now he gets this huge, huge price jack. Will people use Cordero Patterson? Because it could be the best play or the worst play. I, I'm not really quite sure which one. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if I'm long for a world where this is a thing. Like, this is just crazy with him. But it, when you're getting targets like that and, and even carries at this point against Miami, who might honestly be the worst team in the league at this point, uh, it's interesting. I think Fournette is the obvious choice. He's another one that's going to be I think very, very popular for good reason. He has firmly taken over. It seems like Ronald Jones is not even close to getting back in this timeshare right now. You know, 20 plus carries in games. He's the target guy. They throw the ball immense. They score so many points each and every week at home. It, it seems like Fournette would be the other super safe option up there. Yeah, Mixon, I think, is a pretty safe option right now, especially if P. Ryan ends up sitting again. We're not sure whether or not he's going to return, but Chris Evans missed practice with a hamstring injury, so maybe he's not 100% either, and it doesn't seem like they really want to incorporate Williams into this offense at all, that Mixon is probably in line for 24, 25 touches, and we even saw him score a receiving touchdown last week. Do you think this entire range basically comes down to ownership? Because when I'm thinking about ceiling projections, it's Henry... It's probably Aaron Jones and Henderson. And then after that, honestly, it's probably like Chuba Hubbard against the Giants. Yeah, he's a difficult one. Uh, I don't know exactly what to make of him. You know, they're getting a little involved in the passing game. And I don't really know what to make of Carolina as a whole. Obviously, they've regressed a bunch. And when you lose McCaffrey, that's going to happen. I think for me, I would rather find a, a couple hundred for Mixon or Fournette over a guy like Chuba uh, or pay even further down so nothing against them it's a fine spot against the Giants and whatnot I just I'm not Caroline is a weird team right now it's got a 43 total could be a pretty methodical game I like that the projection model always really likes DeAndre Swift because if it was left up to me I was like I can't stomach playing this guy because he has zero points entering the fourth quarter and then all of a sudden he has like 19 points like oh okay but they are gigantic underdogs in this game 15 point dogs in Los Angeles if they just used him in the first quarter it feels like his DraftKings price would be 8k every week he also I'm pretty sure DeAndre Swift has a Q tag every week he just comes preloaded with that it's it's a weird situation they're so bad but yeah you're right I mean the thing that I'm drawn to in every single game this year five or more targets he really helps you in PPR he's got such a good floor in that regard it's going to give you some carries but even when the game gets out of hand they seem more than comfortable with giving him a ton of garbage time and Goff looks to him so often uh flat six I have no problem with him either do we know what's going on with Damian Williams yet because it seems like he's not been activated from the COVID list because he had tested positive, so he could be out the two weeks. Then you have Khalil Herbert at 5200 bucks, who led the league in snap shares of running backs last week. Issue is he's playing Tampa, but the better issue is he's playing, he's only 5200 bucks, And I don't think anyone's going to use him because he's playing Tampa. I don't know what to make of his situation. It's definitely tricky. We obviously have to see uh, what's up with Williams. I just... I don't know. Tampa, Tampa and the Saints are two teams I tend not to mess around with too much. Now, the, the question I would have for a guy like Khalil Herbert, we saw him get some work in the passing game. Can he push that even further? Because I, I think it's almost impossible to have a really, really good, effective game on the ground. And it, I think it's pretty unlikely that Chicago's in the game. They're 12 and a half point dogs. So he's going to have to contribute in a different area. I don't think it's impossible he could do that, but I, I don't think he will be effective on the ground. Yeah, Antonio Gibson looks like he's going to play with this shin injury. He's not practicing yet, but that's kind of par for the course at this time. The, it's weird that the 5Ks are kind of loaded with these fringe backup guys who could have huge upsides. Like Daryl Williams is 5,800 bucks. That seems like a really good price. Devonta Booker is only $5,500 and... I don't expect them to be down by 30 against the Panthers out of the gate. So he'll probably end up with around like 22 to 25 touches in this game. That's pretty good for 5,500 bucks. If I could pick right between Edmonds and Connor, I think there's a nice situation there. I would lean Connor this week over Edmonds, but I just don't think that any of them have enough upside like someone, although Booker's probably not as good as those guys and in a worse situation. I just think he's going to get way more volume. So, and then you have Herbert who could also have a ton of volume and we're looking at, yeah, Williams, Booker and Herbert as potential plays here. I probably like Williams the best, but Booker's pretty close. 
Yeah, Booker's in a fine spot. We've seen that even when they get absolutely destroyed, he can contribute. They just have so many moving parts. I, I want to see every day there's two or three giants that get injured and a couple come back, but certainly it seems like Saquon's not going to be one of them. Booker will have that backfield to himself. You know, we mentioned a lot of 5K guys. What about Damian Harris? I mean, they're, they're pretty sizable favorites at home. I do think he's got upwards of 20 carries in him in the right game script. Jets defense is fine, but it's still a team that struggles, obviously. I think he could have a pretty good game on the ground. He could have a really good day game on the ground. I just don't like the price at $5,700. Like, why wouldn't I use Daryl Williams for $100 more in a game where I know the Chiefs are going to score? They're using him in the passing game, and they're giving him all the goal line work. At least with Damian Harris, he might pile up the volume, but he's unlikely to do much in the receiving game. He can get sniped at the goal line. I, I would just feel much better at $100. If I was going to take like a Damian Harris type of flyer on someone, I'd rather go to James Conner for a hundred dollars less, or I just drop down to the very bottom of the five K range where, you know, you have Herbert, Mike Davis, Miles Sanders, and JD McKissick. Yeah. The Sanders game is coming. And then everyone's going to be a hundred percent back in after they missed out. He's going to be terrible again, but I feel like he might be a guy just to play every week now and just wait for it to happen. Yeah. I mean, I've been doing that and I'm probably going to run out of money by the time the game comes, but it is coming. He's another one. The volume is a serious issue. I don't really understand what Philly does at times, but if you're going to tell me he's going to get upwards of 15 total touches, when you're talking about this type of tag, I will live with it because he's got explosive upside. I don't worry about the Raiders. Uh, I like Miles Sanders, a clearly a tournament play only, but there's no doubt that the ceiling game is still in there. The only one from the four that I could see would be Le'Veon Bell if Latavius Murray misses this game which doesn't inspire confidence. Yeah, I I tried to go mega mind genius last week with Latavius Murray and it worked for a minute, but they just have so many guys that can run the ball. It's just, it's really hard to get any serious work. And I don't know exactly how I feel about that game in general. I think I lean Baltimore. I don't think Cincinnati is that good, but it's hard to think that no matter who is back there, that they're going to get enough touches to justify the cost. Yeah, if there's no Murray, then you have Bell and Freeman. If they might activate Tyson Williams, the, the most difficult part is trying to hedge against Lamar. If Lamar decides that he wants to, and Nick Boyle, yeah. I think, is back this week too, who's just another guy to steal touchdowns on the one yard line, just like uh, Jean Luc Patrick Ricard is another guy. Like, oh, he has four touchdowns on four catches this year. Great. Baltimore is just, they're not a fantasy friendly team outside of Lamar and Mark Andrews. And now that Bateman's back, like even Marquise Brown is a bit suspect. Yeah, he also can't catch. So uh, Baltimore's just a tough team like that. Good team, but, but very difficult. And they run the ball so much, the games get shoot up quickly. So I think there's a lot of options here. In to me, you fall off a cliff after Miles Sanders. You're not big like on McKissick. You're not big, yeah, McKissick. That you can talk yourself into a game script where Gibson is really banged up. It has like two or three carries, and they're just like, you know what? You're going to the sidelines. Then Jared Patterson will come in for a bit of work, but that will increase the snap share for JD McKissick. And it doesn't look like Curtis Samuel is going to be back. And then you know, they don't throw to Adam Humphreys. McLaurin's banged up. Ricky Seals Jones is banged up. That could be one of these games where McKissick backdoors his way into like 14 touches. But fortunately, nine of them are catches and maybe he can find the end zone. That's just a really that that's such a low percentile outcome is the problem, though. Yeah, I mean, I get it. Listen, when you're going to get easy convertible, tar- like his targets convert at such a high rate it's always somewhat appealing. I just, I don't know. I feel like you need multiple things to go right there. It's not the worst thing at flat five. And and again, I think it's significantly better than the options below him. But if I don't have to go there, I probably won't. Wide receivers, Devontae Adams, who you mentioned is number one. He's 8,900 bucks, 8,600 bucks. Tyreek Hill is just sitting there waiting for something. Although he hasn't practiced yet this week either. Cooper Cup, DeAndre Hopkins, DJ Moore, that's 7,000 and up. Then in the sixes, you got Terry McLaurin, Calvin Ridley, Mike Evans, Robert Woods, Antonio Brown below them. Antonio Brown's dealing with an injury as well, an ankle sprain. Jamar Chase, Brennan Cooks, that's the entire $6,000 range. We'll talk about stacks in a second because a lot of that is going to dictate uh, what wide receivers or tight ends end up in your roster anyway, that with a bring back. But if you were going to one-off one of these guys, 
at the high end instead of Derrick Henry. You mentioned Devontae Adams. Let's say you didn't want to play either of them. You wanted to save the money. Where do you think you would go as a one-off wide receiver? I think it would probably, well, depending that he's all right, I think it would be Tyreek. Uh, it's it's always somewhat difficult to get to that stack. People are going to go to Kelsey and whatnot, but isolating Tyreek Hill to me is certainly viable. Really good total, 57 and a half. Yeah, that's insane. He's still getting work. It feels like I watched that game and it was like, oh man, Hardman's getting all these like gadget plays. He still had 12 targets in that game, found the end zone uh, somewhat late. So he's fine. And then even though it's a huge spread, Cooper Cup, I mean, look what he did against the Giants in a blowout. That guy is just unstoppable. Uh, again, I don't know if I am going to have the room to stack up him, Woods, and Stafford. But at the same time, I think that's where I'd look. But particularly Tyreek as a one-off. Anyone, like, would you p- think about A.J. Brown as a one-off? Because Julio probably not going to play with this hamstring injury. Doubt very many people are going to play Henry and A.J. Brown in a lineup. Maybe they will. I don't know. Uh, That doesn't seem like the best correlation possible, but it's two highest scoring guys. You can just kind of pinpoint the two guys who are going to score from that team. But A.J. Brown was down with food poisoning. He's on this snap share. And then, you know, I bet his under four and a half on the Monday night game. And it was looking really good till the fourth quarter when the Bills were like, you know what? Why don't you just stand wide open? And we're just going to pretend like you don't exist. And Tannehill's like, oh, my God, A.J. Brown's open. Let me throw to him. It seems like he could have a huge game in this spot at 6,300 bucks. Yeah, again, same game. So really good exposure to that. The other good thing about A.J. Brown is if he has a nuclear game, unless Tennessee has some sort of ridiculous output, he probably significantly impacts Derrick Henry. So if you're, if you're talking about one of the most popular running backs and certainly the most expensive, you're directly leveraging against him with, with a AJ Brown play. I have no problem with that. I, I think I may look to some Tannehill if, if I want to get really different, but what about right below him? What about Jamar Chase, who is just unstoppable. I played Jamar Chase almost every single week. I wrote this up in the newsletter this week that a contrarian stack that you can probably get behind this week is Burrow, Chase, and actually Tyler Boyd because Baltimore really struggles against slot receivers, and that's where Boyd's running the majority of his routes right now. And then you got to figure out someone to bring it back with from the probably like Mark Andrews, to be perfectly honest with you. But no, I love Jamar Chase. Jamar Chase is good every week. Jamar Chase cashes his longest reception prop every single week. It's insane. It's an actual cash cow. Burrow gives him like three or four chances. He always catches at least one deep ball. Uh, I feel like this week, not that he's going to get lost by any stretch, but I don't know. I don't think as many people are looking to him and just Cincinnati in general. He's surrounded by some good options. They all have Q tags, which is unfortunate, but I may look to him as well. Uh, Just really impressed with how good he is. It seems like he is open behind the defense five times a game. I don't know how that's possible. Yeah, Yeah, it's a great skill to just be wide open all the time. Uh, And he's mastered it. T. Higgins, unfortunately, has not mastered that. But Chase is just good. And in in a game where they seriously could be trailing, I think Burrow's volume will be a lot better. 62, uh, price is right for me. I have no problem with Chase. And he's going to have those big games too because if he converts two of those big plays and theoretically they go for touchdowns, all of a sudden he's scoring like 40 DraftKings points. Brennan Cooks is someone I feel like I want to play, but I liked him the first two weeks when he was a bit cheaper, but now he's at 6,000. Like, does he really have the upside? And the answer is probably yes. He probably does have the upside because he gets 38 targets a game. He just needs to break one of these to the end zone. Yeah, it's I go back and forth with stuff like this because it's like, okay, realistically, there might only be a couple hundred passing yards and maybe one passing touchdown up for grabs, which is not a lot. But it's also like he's going to get so much of it that maybe you can justify it. Uh, I thought Anthony Miller was emerging. He's not even on the team anymore. So I don't understand exactly what Houston's doing, but I get it. I just wish kind of what you just said that he was. If he was more in the Devontae Smith, Corey Davis, AJ Green, you know, a thousand less, I'd be a lot more interested. To me, give me Woods, Chase, even Godwin. I could see those. I do think that the concentration of targets is still really good 
for Brendan Cooks. I'm not super terrified of Arizona's secondary by any means, especially if they're 17 and a half point favorites and probably not trying by the second quarter. That could be a good situation for Cooks to use his speed, break a big one, and all of a sudden you're like, oh, here we go. I just got all of Jamar Chase's points, but with Brendan Cooks, and I should have seen it coming because he had, we knew he was going to have 13 to 18 targets because there's no one else to throw to besides Nico Collins and Jordan Akins. So uh, he's on the radar for me. This 58, like 5,000 to 59 pretty intriguing is it weird that i like sterling shepherd the best and i kind of hope like darius slayton is practicing he'll probably be back there's no hunky tony he's going to be out one to two weeks and galladay might be back too and stefan gilmore is going to play it seems for the panthers that's why i want those guys back that if shepherd is just manning the slot against the panthers he's going to pile up again almost like a brendan cook style target share this week yeah, I mean, we saw it last week. He's he's going to be busy. You mentioned I like that hunky Tony. That's good, good stuff. Uh, yeah, that guy when he's on the field and not getting ejected or injured, he's good. But the Giants just have so many walking wounded. Shepard's fine, and then I mean, you want to talk about targets? Jalen Waddle <laughs> he gets so many targets, but his his a dot is in the negatives. I feel like it's I don't understand why they're all like bubble screens or something because he he racks up a ton of receptions but not a ton of yards. He doesn't, but they also seem to have specific packages for him at the goal line, which is really intriguing. It's a lot like Adam Thielen and Devontae Adams, the way that Miami deploys him inside the five-yard line. They are only two and a half point. If they lose this game. I, I like uh, I like them to win this week, by the way. I think if they lose, their coach is going to get fired. Really? You? I, yeah. I mean, you might be right, but I don't feel like this falls on Flores. I don't either. I just think that's what's going to happen. And he's going to be a really nice D coordinator hire somewhere. Like, yeah, their defense sucked against Jacksonville. They were, I mean, when you're down your two best corners who are your two best players on defense, it's not going to be a good scene. No, no. I, I, and I do think they have more than a fighting chance to win this game. I just think if they don't, uh, with all those picks and it's just each, not a great scene, but Waddle, it is true. They do implement him in a lot of ways. Obviously, the other weapons, I, we'll get to Kosicki in, in time, but Miami doesn't have a ton of options on offense. Now, it does seem like Devontae Parker is going to play this week. Preston Williams, not sure yet with his groin injury. But if Parker and Williams miss again, Mac Hollins actually does seem like a play because he's super cheap. I don't even where he's got to be in the in the where. Yeah. Oh, he's the flat men. Yeah. Like you, you, you play. Yeah. He's the way to save money if those two guys sit. Yeah, so if you go with like a top end stack, that could be an interesting just piece to that. I tried that last week, and you know who I used in my lineups? Chris Moore. No, it was Kaderil Hodge. Didn't know he was in the NFL. He's still on the Browns? No, he's on the Lions. <laughs> Not good. I used Uman Ra St. Brown. He might as well have been Kaderil Hodge. Hey, he ended up with like five catches by the end of the game. He, yeah, by the end, it was... Uh, I don't know, man, but it, that's always a, a tricky spot because you're, you're attaching them to your stack and, you know, a lot of those guys get you like eat sometimes. Sometimes that can be effective, but in spots, I think particularly in a week, if, you, if you're like, I love Henry, but I also want a big time stack, that could be one of the only ways to do it. Anyone else in the, like, are you going to start like almost like here's the ultimate GPP correlation, Miles Sanders and Henry Ruggs. I, I mean, it's not that crazy. I don't know exactly what to make. It, it, he seems fine, right? I know he's sporting a Q tag. I see it's a knee, but assuming we get that he's good to go, he's another burner when he connects. I know the volume's not immense, but it's over the top. I, I don't mind those little stacks without the quarterback. I mean, even something like Cooks and like, if you wanted to use, you, you were mentioned Connor before, like just getting a little exposure to both sides of the game. I do try to do that on teams and a Philly and Raiders one is an interesting type of dynamic. Uh, anyone below 500 that really sticks out. I, like I mentioned, I like Tyler Boyd at $4,700. I don't think that he's super safe by any means, but I do see a path to upside for him. If Lamar gets going and we can kind of funnel all the touchdowns to one spot or have them completely spread out. So no one is really gaining 
on DraftKings from the Baltimore side. I think we can kind of condense the Cincinnati side pretty good. You said Hardman, he's 43 again. I'm in Ross St. Brown. He is 4,100 bucks. Russell Gage looks like he's going to be back in this game. Like there's a bunch of names who I know can score points. It's like Rager. Rager's going to score 500 DraftKings points in one game at some point because all they do is just bomb it to him. That's his only route. Yeah, and he catches a lot of them, but he's always out of bounds. He scored like four touchdowns this year, but he somehow ran out of bounds for us. I'm a big Jalen Ray. I'm the last man on that island. I think Jalen Rager is actually going to be pretty good in life. But another guy, this guy drops, it's got to be three or four balls every game. Robbie Anderson, oh God. I, I don't did, understand. I did it last week, man. And he finally he, scored, he scored a touchdown. It had like 11 points. <laughs> I, I don't. Like the Giants, there's 7.7 yards allowed per passing attempt, 24th in the league. Everything, I think, is there. But Robbie Anderson just, he can't catch the ball. He converts like 20% of his targets. And it's not helping that Darnold's throwing him the ball. Although the no. ca- the Carolina receivers this week, just Carolina in general, I think are undervalued just by the sheer amount of drops that team had last week. And it wasn't just... Robbie Anderson, Chuba was putting it on the ground. DJ Moore was putting it on the ground. I don't know, like, instead of dipping their gloves and stick them before the game, they you know, dipped them in some sort of grease. That, that was not a wise yeah, decision. Butter. No, not, not wise at all. I just, I don't know, man. You got a lot of targets, over 29 targets over the last three weeks. And it's a, another game where Carolina easily could be trailing. They're only a three-point favorite on the road. I love the volume, but it's just, each and every week, Robbie Anderson finds a way to be wildly inefficient. Terrace Marshall might not play either with a concussion. He left last week, so that might condense the market share of this team a lot. If you wanted to go like Darnold, DJ Moore, Robbie Anderson as a stack against the Giants, which I don't hate by any means. You can bring it back and with Booker, Shepherd. Booker or Shepard. I mean, they're right around the same yeah. price. If you want to play that game, like, hey, I actually think the Giants run the ball effectively, then Carolina's going to have to pass. They don't pass a ton to Hubbard. They did just sign Amir Abdullah, but I have no idea if he's going to be worked in or not this week outside of being like a kick returner. That's somewhat appealing when you get into the threes. I mentioned Nico Collins. He's playing again. He's only thirty two hundred bucks. If those Dolphins guys sit, Mac Collins is three thousand. Do you think people will play Rashad Bateman at thirty four? I do think some people are are interested there. We saw a pretty effective game. Him and Duvernay. Uh, I'm. A, I think Bateman's going to be really good. I don't know if I want to go there right off the bat. And then you think people will play Van Jefferson? I don't know. I, I think you would really have to be stacking up the Rams side of the ball and you go instead of using Woods, you use Jefferson. Yeah. As a third, like, I think I'd rather attach Higby than do that. But um, Bateman's kind of interesting. I, I don't know exactly. It seems like his price is destined to rise. Of course, I'm just not sure if I need to do that. And I might wait and see, as you've mentioned, a couple guys that are more if clauses, like if, if a, someone else is injured, they're going to be solidified. It doesn't seem like Bateman's in that camp. He's just going to be part of the offense. Yeah. And the thing is, like, what do you, if he, let's say he doesn't score a touchdown in this game, what's his best case scenario? Like five for 70, maybe? Like, that's like best case scenario? Yeah. I mean, you're looking at, I don't see any way where the volume is going to get any anything higher than that. And in an offense like Baltimore's, he's certainly not the priority. Tight ends. Talk about one-offs here. Kelsey is the max. He's just up to $7,600 right now. Playing through a hand injury. He has some sort of neck injury at the moment. I'm such a, I'm such a slut for Travis Kelsey. Like Every week, I'm just like, man, I can't miss out on his five-touchdown game, which never actually ends up coming. But he even had a bad game last week, and I still think he was the highest-scoring tight end. Oh, I mean, raw points. He he's always going to be right there. It's just it's kind of got elements of, of Derrick Henry in the sense that, yeah, and it's even more pronounced because these other tight ends are almost like half the price. Sometimes, does it work with the build? Obviously, if you can get Travis Kelsey, you want to play him. But if guys like Hawkinson and Gazicki and Higby types are only five points behind him, you're clearly going to want that extra couple thousand. You are, but I think that the price discrepancy between Kelsey and those guys is Kelsey does beat the pants off them in terms of fantasy points yeah. most weeks, where Henry is going to have those weeks where he scores like 15 points more than everyone else, especially with like a mini slate like this with only 10 t- or 10 games. 
but you can usually logically point to the other running backs who will challenge him to be running back one for the week, uh, even on a slate like this. Like, you know, you just kind of look at the pricing. With tight end, it really could be anyone. Oh, no doubt. I mean, so so many of these guys are just, are you going to convert one of your four targets by falling in the end zone? And, you know, Kittle is not here. There's some other top end guys not there. I, Waller, I think anytime you're like right next to Kelsey, I do feel like you get a little lost because it's like, oh, I'll just find the money to go to Travis Kelsey or I'll punt. I don't really like Waller, but I do think in a game theory perspective, it's kind of interesting. I get it. But outside of week one this year, he's been pretty disappointing he has but it it almost maybe this isn't true but like in my mind i'm kind of justifying it like aaron jones where i'm like you're probably gonna get it wrong more often than you get it right but there's gonna be a waller game where he has like 13 for 202 (laughs) it's just like okay well i'll pay the the tax to get to that week other than that, I would imagine Gesicki at $4,700 is going to be pretty chalky, and it's hard not to almost bite into it, where he's running all these routes from the slot. He's not being asked to block whatsoever. Maybe they should ask him to block. I don't know. They have like eight other tight ends on this team. But it's like Waddle Gesicki when Tua is playing. Like Tua loves Gesicki. He does. Yeah, it's very confusing. I, I wanted to play Gesicki last week. Obviously, it was the London game, but... I was watching and I kept thinking he was catching balls, but it was just another tight end. Uh, I do think he's in a pretty good spot, though. The price is right. The matchup is good. The target should be there. I don't know exactly. Is God, what is Goddard going to come back or what? I, I don't know because he missed last Thursday's game with the positive COVID yeah, it's test. Been a while. So theoretically, he would have more time to be able to come back. If he plays, I like him a lot. And I don't know if people are going to go to him because, you know, Higby's going to be involved in stacks. Kasicki's going to be one of the most popular. This is almost the Rick Gaiman squeeze play type theory where just both guys on other side of him are probably going to be pretty popular that he just kind of gets left in the dust. A lot like Weller being right next to Kelsey because people are going to play Andrews. People are going to play Pitts. Hawkinson probably gets left off. Kasicki's a play. Higby's a part of the, you know, the biggest favorite stack of the week. And then I know people are going to play Zach Ertz, and I hate Zach Ertz on Arizona. I don't think it's a good fit. I think it's not that it can't work. It's just what are you realistically getting from Zach Ertz? You, he has to score a touchdown or you have six points. Yeah, and if he scores, now you have 12 points, which for like basically four isn't. Uh, I mean, I'm with you. Arizona is a, a, frustr- they're a frustrating team before this because they've got a million guys. Uh, they've got Kyler who, you know, he runs him in, even though he's not scrambling a ton, he still somehow scores on the ground a lot. They've got two backs. I don't like him at all. I would rather, I don't know. I was going to say something stupid about Evan Ingram, but. Was it, uh, do- well, I mean, it wouldn't be stupid if you said don't play Evan Ingram because he reeks. That's true. But I wasn't going to say that though. I was going to say something dumb because I, I can't quit that guy. I, I, I don't know how much. Do you see anything down here like Ferkster, Cole Komet? I don't know if I want to mess around in the, in the lower threes. I, I know he's not practicing yet, but it looks like he's going to play. I don't understand why we wouldn't just play Ricky Seals Jones again. For 30, yeah, I mean, if he's good to go uh, and they're going to be trailing, he obviously got it done last week. I think he'll be, if he's good to go, though, I assume he'll be like the obvious pay down tight end. He will be, but I think that Gis- people will work to get Gesicki into lineups. Yeah, I agree with that. And listen, it's not a bad thing to play. Like, you know, you don't need, oh, well, he's going to be popular. I can't play him. Like, you can obviously play some of these popular guys. You just can't play them all together. Hunter Henry's the one running routes for the Patriots. It's not John who John who's blocking. So maybe Hunter Henry at 41. Below that, OJ Howard isn't practicing. Gronk is now looking more doubtful than probable. That Cameron Brake could actually just be the last man standing on the, on the box, which would be huge. Yeah, I mean, he hasn't. You know, you look at Brait's numbers and it's like, oh, he's done nothing. And it's true, but he also hasn't scored. And like when you play a guy like that, you're just drawing to a touchdown. And the good thing about Tampa, you probably have four opportunities to f- catch a passing touchdown for a guy like Brait. So you could do that. And then it's like Cole Komet. He might not even have one touchdown to go around uh, with fields. Yeah, no, him d- ball, don't so. don't play Cole Komet. Trust me. Don't, okay. you don't you don't want to play him if you want to pay down for an absolute loser tight end. I don't think that Tyler Croft is going to play, meaning Ryan Griffin is the only tight end that the Jets have. 
and he's 2,500 bucks. I don't think that I'm allowed to play Jets tight ends after the Chris Herndon situations all of many years. I never, ever got him right. Hey, he scored a touchdown but, last week. I saw him score a touchdown, and then the refs threw immediately a flag. I didn't end up seeing it. That counted? Yeah, it ended up counting. Yeah, let's see here. Um, oh, that's not good for Ryan Griffin. Why is it showing me? Has he really not played since? He played like last week. What's going on here? I looked up his. Oh, no, that's because I clicked on Ryan Griffin, the quarterback for the Buccaneers, mm. not, not uh, Ryan Griffin. Yeah, this guy's. He's on a nice streak of getting one fantasy point, but he's consistent. <laughs> he's out, he's out there and involved. Oh yeah, four, yeah. Let's see, two targets against Atlanta, four against the Titans. He had six week one against Carolina. Yeah, well, you probably don't want to play him. Uh, it was like because we were making fun of Cust about it because the Jets were on by. It was like former Jets week for like random losers the Jets used to have actually had a good week. Herndon scored a touchdown. Le'Veon Bell scored a touchdown. Darnold to Robbie Anderson ended up finally connecting at the end of that game. Now that the Jets are back, you probably don't want to play any of those guys. Yeah, Jets, I worry about what's exact. I mean, I don't think New England is anything special. Somehow they can't win a home game. I do think they are going to win this week, though. Yeah, I think that it's just... What's Zach Wilson going to do against the Patriots defense? Not that it's great, but it just seems like they can scheme him to death. Yeah. Didn't we already do this? Yeah. This is the second one, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it was, that was the game where he threw like eight picks. Yeah. He threw four in the first half. It was good. good yeah. Game. So it, it doesn't seem good. Uh, and that was at home. It was. Quarterbacks and stacks. Would you play any quarterback without stacking them together? So I think you can do that with Lamar and Kyler fields. Uh, so I used to say Lamar and Kyler. I think hurts for me is the, the guy you could do it with as well. I, I mean, you could do it with fields, but I have noticed that I think would be a mistake. Um, he's Lamar only, and he's only 5,300 bucks though. But if I was going to do it, I, all I'm saying is I would attach someone to him. You would attach Cole Komet and Cole Komet would score zero points. That's true, but at least I would my stack would go down together because Fields would also have zero. I would wager um, Tua is going to be popular at fifty five hundred bucks. Oh, it's a cheap I'd stack. Play Matt Ryan. I, I think I would too, but it's a cheap stack. You go Tua, Waddle, and Gesicki, especially if Parker sits, or even then you Ridley put Ridley on the back. Yeah, Ridley on the back, or, or Pitts yeah. on the back, or Cordero on the back. Whatever you want to do, I think it just makes so much sense for people that want to play Derrick Henry. Very true. I hope people do that. Not that I, I don't think that could work. I'd rather play Darnold uh, with the Panther stack for much less cumulative ownership. <sighs> yeah, I mean, I would say I want to, I would like to go like Hineke, McLaurin, Seals, Jones, but I think that might just be too crazy. I did that last week. And let me tell you, it lost <laughs> money. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like kind of the baseline that we're going for. It's just tough because these quarterbacks up top are so good. I mean, you've got the, the super statues with Brady, but the volume gets you there because they throw basically, you know, like 70% of the time. I find Lamar, it, I, I find Brady hard to stack with because you just get it wrong it so much. It's hard to stack with, but the good thing about it is that he, he comes preloaded with multiple other spots in your lineup. So like you don't have to get as many one-offs, right? Because for Brady to get there, it's almost impossible for it to be concentrated amongst only one pass catcher. So it's tough, but even when they blow teams out, he's going to throw the ball more than 40 times. So you can accurately get two of your wide receiver spots taken care of, or one of your running backs if you use four net. So what do we like for an actual stack here? Where do we want to go? Do we want to go Stafford cup? That it only just do the double. I mean, if you're going with Cup, I think you can just do a skinny stack. No problem. Um, maybe if I did that, I would personally probably run it back with Hawkinson. I know people aren't high on him, but I, I still think the volume will be there. I, I, I do want to get a little Detroit in that game if I, I can. It's funny because I would say Swift, but after we talk through the running backs, I don't know. It's not that I want to waste a spot on Swift. It's just I think that there are other comparable running backs in that place where I can still save money at running back if I didn't use Swift. I can find someone else on Detroit. Maybe it is Hawkinson because legit no one's playing Hawkinson. No, and I, I think that's interesting with them because people are going to go to Daryl Henderson and, and other things in that game, and I get it. Uh, 
it's tricky because like Jalen Hurts every week gets there. He truly does. It's not good. It's not pretty. I just talk about impossible to stack up. I can't get Devontae Smith right. I want to see what's up with Kyle and then Miles Sanders. I don't think you really want to attach him with Hurts. It's not like it can't be done, but it's just Philly's a really difficult team, even though there's a lot of fantasy points out there. Well, here's the thing. What if Hurts actually ever has a good game? How many points yeah, is he going to score? going to break the slate. Yeah. But but who is it? Is it like, like I don't know if I want to do Hurts and like Rager. That just seems really, really bad. I think it's Goddard. If Goddard plays, I think it's Hurts and Goddard and just go on your way. Rugs. Yeah, Rugs. I can see. Renfro. Jacobs. Yeah. I'm just never big on Jacobs. Like, neither am I. Has Jacobs? Neither am I. I mean, I'm sure it's happened, but when was the last time Josh Jacobs appeared in a winning DraftKings lineup that wasn't a Vegas showdown slate? (laughs) Yeah, I mean, it's it's weird because he he at times has shown now he's catching passes, but typically it's not it's not there. You need multiple touchdowns, and I'm with you. I'm not on Josh Jacobs, and I feel like rarely do you get a mega ceiling from him. If you had to guess right now on the early projections for the week from runthesims.com, who the three best points per dollar quarterbacks are on the main slate. Tua. It's not Tua. Tua's like seven. Good. Lamar. Lamar's number one by a pretty good margin. Mm, Stafford. It's not Stafford. Stafford is not inside the top 10 in points per dollar. Good job, Ben. Real sharp. Uh, well, you don't know what we put into these projections. I don't. I don't know, know. the projections. <laughs> it's all deadly. Um, I mean, are they cheapies or like? Is it like Kyler? It's two five thousand dollar guys. Yeah, that's. It's Matt Ryan is number two. Good. I could see that. I have no problem with that. And then Daniel Jones is number three. Danny Dimes. I. I don't know. He's tough because I, maybe I'm playing like psychologist or something. I just worry that after his uh, brain injury, that he might be a little less reluctant to run. And I need him to be out there taking crazy hits because that's where is all his upside. If he's going to give you three carries for four yards, I worry severely about what what his upside is. It's funny because points per dollar Stafford, you know, he's still over three uh, points per dollar. But like Stafford and Cup just seem so safe to me this week. Maybe that's just the wrong angle to take. I mean, they are, they are, they're double, you know, 15 point favorites. I, you got Henderson there. Any Rams guy, you, you is could play, be... but you could play Henderson in with them. You could, but if you do that, I think that you probably need someone on, eh, maybe you don't, but I, I was going to say you might need someone on the Giants because that's like, or on Detroit, because that's just a full on onslaught if those three get there. Yeah, but it could be like the Giants game last week. Oh, the Rams won 40 to three. And they all got there. It's true. I mean, that's. Oh, whatever. I'll just play Hawkinson. Give me Hawkinson. That's fine. Um, Yeah, maybe you do just like with some of these really big time totals, you could go full onslaught. We've seen that with Tampa where it's just like, oh, it's it's Brady, Godwin, Evans, Brown, Brate four net it's like wait what and then somehow like four of them get there i mean the the best week i had i think it was two weeks ago or three weeks ago it was a brady onslaught dan it wasn't it it wasn't even close like i just blew everyone out that's what i'm saying like those can work i i don't know if the rams are the perfect team for that but at the same time when you're when you're in a situation like this it could get out of hand quickly i i mean detroit they should have multiple wins, but then last week they, that was as bad of an effort as I've seen in a long time. If we can find some pay down guys here, I got the stack for you. You ready for it? Off. No, 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 no. Let's Good. see. There, there. Okay. It only leaves me with $2,400 per player remaining, which is probably not optimal. So I don't think that Mahomes, Derrick Henry, Tyreek Hill, mm-hmm. Kelsey, and AJ Brown are going to work. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a, a good, uh, 40k onslaught right there that's going to be so fascinating though because it's like i always think this it never happens is it possible that mahomes won't be popular that that's why I, that's, that's why i wanted to try this because it's it's a tough scene man 
Maybe it's so hard. If you don't play Tyreek and you just play Kelsey. And you, Hardman. I mean, just go Mahomes, Kelsey, Henry. Then you have $4,100 per player. If you use AJ Brown along with Derrick Henry, which I don't think is crazy because just of the limited options that the Titans have that you have to think that scoring goes through those two guys, you have $3,700 remaining. So if you just take like the shittiest defense in the world, you know, play Texans D against the Cardinals, they're 2000. Then you're back up to 41. Then you have like Amon Ross, St. Brown, Rashad Bateman. Like you can fill it in at some point. I can, I can see the snowflakes on my lineup already. It's a, uh, it's a dangerous game. Yeah. I, I feel like with that, I'd probably try to attach another chief. Well, Hardman, Hardman is the logical one then. Cause he's 4,300. Yeah. It just feels like if, um, cause like, yeah, I guess for me, maybe I'm digging too far into it, but it's like if AJ Brown and Derek Henry get there, Mahomes must be going crazy one way or another. Like he's either playing massive catch up or, they have laid the wood to an extreme extent. Could you, would it, I mean, it's, you wouldn't want to do it because you'd want to take advantage of all the points being scored and you can pretty directly draw a line of where they're going to go. But what if you just played Henry Brown and Mahomes? Henry Brown with, with no pass catchers, no pass catchers and be like, Oh, it's the Pringle game. It's the, it's Hardman. It's Demarcus Robinson. It's a catch for Daryl Williams. Like just hope it gets spread out. Yeah, I mean, he gives you some – what I think you would probably need is for Mahomes to score on the ground, and that's not impossible by any stretch. Hey, his, his, rushing, uh, his rushing prop has hit five of six weeks now? Yeah, he's been, he's been active there, and their line, I think, actually forced him to run a little bit. I'd probably still attach somebody, but I get what you're saying. It is a very difficult offense because they throw shovel passes and they do <laughs> stupid stuff around the goal line with these guys. It just feels like if you're going to have 15 to 16,000 uh, on Tennessee, you're going to need more than just Mahomes. I would agree. It's just like, like trying to fill it out. It's just really tough. Like it, it almost feels like you would have to use Hardman at that point. Yeah, it, it does. I think that it's so tough too, because when Kelsey comes in, he's not overly expensive, but he's killing it, a position that you're usually, usually using to save salary at times. Exactly. So it's yeah, like, it makes it tough. Then you, then you have to use Ricky seals Jones as your flex or something. Yeah. So then you're going double tight end and take it from someone that knows that never works. I do that every week. It confirmed bad idea. <laughs> if you're doing Brady, who gets left out, I would leave out Antonio Brown this week. So would I. Godwin would be the one. I, if I could only choose one box receiver, it would be Godwin. I would choose Evans because I feel like Evans and Brown. I mean, that's that's the stack that I won with was Brady, Evans, and Brown. And it was a week where Godwin did a bit, but not a ton. It feels like he is the best floor, but the worst upside of the bunch. That's fair. I mean, Godwin always gets the targets. It is true. Was that the week where they had they each had two? Yeah. Yeah, that was useful. Um <laughs> I just, do you have any interest in throwing four net in with Brady? I could see it. It's just, he's very expensive too now. Yeah, he is. But I, I still think that, I mean, he's kind of the same though, in terms of price, he's, he's in the range as the, as the pass catchers. It's true, but uh, do we really think he's going to catch? Like, are you just saying like, you can use those two and just kind of somehow get your hand in all the bucks touchdowns because you're just monopolizing what could be five or six touchdowns which means bucks d scoring three possibly accurate thanks to matty ice somehow who's not even in the game just throwing <laughs> all the touchdowns to the bucks defense yeah i i think that is pos i mean there's a connection for net i think will be live for five six catches and you would have the best offense getting basically all the production yeah, just looking at it right now, I'm looking at some of the optimals that get spit out. It's actually a triple stack with Lamar, Mark Andrews, and Marquise Brown would be like the optimal stack if it hits kind of thing. I have no, that's a game that I, I, I'm hoping doesn't get a ton of interest in terms of Cincinnati and Baltimore because I, I have some appeal and some interest there that guys like Chase maybe are lost. And I don't think I'm going to go to the Ravens backfield, but I certainly probably want to get to Lamar. So the other one, the last one that I would consider, and you kind of hit on it, was Matt Ryan. Matt Ryan, Pitts, Ridley, Waddle on the bringback, or Gesicki on the bringback, and 
hopefully there's points in that game. And it's not like 17-13 because they both suck. What about Patterson? I mean, I'm only going to play so many lineups. Like, I've been playing five lineups a week that I really want to kind of either go all in on my stack and I don't want to break it up. Like, I don't want to start mixing in Patterson for Ridley. Or I, it would either be one or the other, I feel. I mean, I have no problem with that. I, I don't know exactly if Gage throws a wrench into some of this, but I, I still think that that's pretty viable overall. Maybe uh, maybe I fade Pitts and just use Gasicki in the tight end spot, then go Patterson and, and Ridley. Wayne Gallman. Yikes. Um, didn't know he was still... Ca- I, I'm a big Wayne Gallman guy. I wish he was still on the Giants. Seems like it. Seems like you're a big Wayne Gallman guy now that you just found yeah. out he plays for Atlanta. Yeah, I mean, I... I that his jersey his atlanta falcons jersey never came in the mail must have got lost but uh yeah listen i think that atlanta the way they play that's it that's an ugly game but we've seen time and time again two bad teams those games can devolve quickly i wouldn't be stunned to see a back and forth affair in miami yeah it's like philly and vegas feels like Derek carr stack him up waller and rugs use sanders on the bring back all right that's that is like if there's some type of like 10 million entry tournament winner take all that's that's the move yeah because the one game that we basically didn't talk about was maybe aaron Rodgers beats the crap out of washington <sighs> yeah it's just gonna be like Rodgers to Devonte adams uh, the most obvious pairing and i just don't even use that yeah maybe that's the way to go because that those are the only two guys you really need to like, you can skinny stack those no problem oh no problem and then you go mckissick yeah mckissick or ricky seals jones it's doable for sure. You're just, you're, you're, you're probably sacrificing the Tennessee chiefs game to an extent. And every time I go all in on the obvious game, it sucks. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to do that. You want to go to the awful games. That's the move. <laughs> yeah. Like last week, if I just had the, the conviction to go all in on that, like Minnesota Carolina game, I would have been in good shape. Yeah. Not Robbie Anderson though. No. Just no. re- really the Viking side of the ball. Theo, Theo and yeah, KJ Osborne we, or Cook, we would have been good. Defenses, I mean, the Cardinals have to be the obvious play, right? Super obvious. I also can't believe that the Rams, I mean, I can, but you, the, uh, famous last words, but I don't see any possible way that playing the Rams is a good move. That seems completely insane. I'd rather play the Patriots at 34 against Zach Wilson. I'd rather play literally any defense on the slate than the Rams. <laughs> even the lions yes honestly i played a ton of lions last week to save the money i played a ton of panthers last week they scored a touchdown so that worked out like you just have to luck into a touchdown somehow that's all you need from a defense 100 percent. and i don't think the rams defense is that much more likely to score than any of these randos so who are the cheap that we paid down for the giants Gi- giants yeah giants against carolina against darnold that sounds pretty good yeah, that's not bad. I don't mind that. I so I got Gi- uh, Giants, Atlanta against Tua. Arizona is going to be super popular, but I think they're going to be good. The Packers at thirty three and the Patriots at thirty four. Panthers at thirty five. I think like some sort of you pick two of those like six, and I think you'll be good to go. What about the Ravens? I don't know if I love the Ravens here. I don't think I do honestly either. I just. I'm going to look for neighbors of the Cardinals because I want exposure to those type of builds, but not use the Cardinals. So whether it's the Dolphins, I don't like the Raiders uh, or the Ravens. The Dolphins is kind of interesting, too. Well, the Ravens can create a really good game script for their defense, which is huge. And Burrow you know, has no one to block for him. He's not afraid to throw a pick or two or just get absolutely rocked. And then you have the backup coming in. So I can, you know what? The Ravens actually isn't a terrible idea. Like you can't play the, seen, you can't play the Bengals because the Ravens don't pass enough. That's a problem. Exactly. No, and we've seen Cincinnati. I mean, it's easy to point to the game where Burrow threw all the interceptions, but like we've seen it unravel when they get behind against Chicago and other times. Burrow takes some chances, and I do think there's an, a reasonable shot that Baltimore punches first, and, and it gets away from them. It's in Baltimore. No one's going to go to the Ravens' defense. Obviously, everyone's just going to play the Cardinals if you have that money. I don't think it's that crazy. Again, these are flyers, but I, I may look to that a little bit, even though it skews me out a bit. If you do want like passing attempts against from a crap quarterback, 
Like Green Bay, well, not having a good defense. They're they're overpriced and no one will use them. And they might see 50 Heineke passes. It's the name of the game. All you want is chances. It's just like, uh, you know, roulette spins or whatever. Like you just want a, a shot. That's the problem, as you mentioned with Bolt. Some of these conservative passing attacks it doesn't do you any good to get like four points from your defense. You'd rather roll the dice and hope that you give up 30 points, but you have two pick sixes and then you're there. It's now time for the play the best plays lineup, Ben. You're familiar with this from the golf show. We've changed we've changed the name of it on the football show to the shitter guy lineup. So you got a guy, the games are about to start, it's 20 minutes. You gotta take a shit. Now, you know what? I'll fill out a DraftKings millionaire maker lineup on my phone in less than three minutes. Let's put let's put the time on the board, see if we can do this. Who is this guy taking? Derrick Henry? I think that'd probably be where we'd have to go here. Derrick Henry and Daryl Henderson. Those are the running backs. Sorry. Let's, let's work off that. Kaziki. Yeah. I think Kaziki at tight end makes a lot of sense or Ricky seals Jones. If he plays, but we don't know if he's going to play or not. So Kaziki. All right. We're down to 5,000 per player. Who's the with Cardinals defense. Okay. All right. So we got four spots filled out. Who are the obvious, like mid tier chalk receivers? Uh, it's not a lot. I mean, yeah, I mean, this is just shaping up. I'm, I'm like, oh, Waddle, and that means it's Tua, and then I just self-exclude. Yeah, well, let's try to pick a quarterback. What quarterback are we going with here? Because shitter guy doesn't necessarily correlate all of his lineups. Maybe maybe a correlation. Mm, Matty Ice? Do you think people want to play Matt Ryan? No. Not really. Do you think they want to play Hertz by himself? I was just about to say Hertz because he can move. I just don't think we can. I mean, naked Hertz is just like truly outrageous. Naked Lamar. Naked Lamar. Yeah, I think that works. Naked Lamar. And that that leaves us. Oh, man. Bateman. What a sleeper. We can play Bateman now. Done. So Bateman, Chase. Bateman at 34. All right. We got 5,200 bucks left for two receivers and a flex. Do, is there another? Do we want to, I was gonna say, is there another running back in like the five Ks that we can use? Like, is Daryl Williams gonna be super popular? I mean, it's it's good exposure to that game. The double running backs from that game. Let's do that. We'll throw in and uh, also another thing. Shitter guy is not concerned about is playing someone uh, from the late set of games in his flex. Not not okay. Happening. Uh, so 4,900 for wide receivers. So we can go like double mid tier or like lower mid tier, one cheap, one more expensive. Uh, we could go. Nope, that's not it. I was going to say Tyler Boyd. We could go like Boyd and Renfro. We could go Miko. I know we just used uh, Daryl Williams. We could use Hardman because mm-hmm. Kelsey and. Kelsey's on the injury report. Hill's on the injury report. Maybe we take out Williams and play Mecole Hardman instead. Okay. Let, yeah, I think that might help a lot, actually. Let's see. Hardman. No. Hardman. Chuck. Oh, yeah. This helps a ton. Yeah. So now we're at $5,600 for a receiver and a flex. Wait, I'm at 66. I think they gave me an extra thousand. That's that's huge. You put in the cheat code. Did you use code PME? Did that, that unlock you an extra thousand bucks? Yeah, I got. I have sixty six hundred on mine. This is great. So let's say I got. Play. I, I got Lamar, Derrick Henry, Daryl Henderson, Bateman, Hardman, Gasicki, and Cardinals defense. Oh yeah, I put in Boyd. That's what did it. Ah. So we need a I receiver and a Bo- flex. I was gonna do Boyd Ridley. Boyd Ridley. Does that work? He plays off Gasicki. Maybe I feel like it's gonna be a flex running back. What about? What about Mixon? We just have a weird, like, or for, I mean, I think Fournette would be the safest play. Fournette is going to have a day. So if we get Fournette in there, that leaves us 4,900. So you can have Crowder, Higgins, Robbie Anderson, Renfro. Renfro is like super safe, if nothing else. Yeah, Renfro, where we could put, we could do Boyd or Higgins uh, for the opposite of our Baltimore. Do you think they'll be popular enough for shitter gay? You think Renfro will be? I don't know. It's a tough scene. I don't know if this range is going to be super popular at all. Yeah, I feel like 
He is super. He, Renfro does just kind of like do his thing. What if we don't use Fournette and as our last receiver, we use Sterling Shepard, who, or Watt, oh my God. who, Sterling Shepard, who, you know, with Tony probably being out, and then that leaves us 5,700 for a flex. And then that gives us, you know, one of the two Arizona running backs. It gives us Jalen Waddle, Connor. Devontae Booker, Connor, Herbert. If there's no Damian Williams, which people probably wouldn't do because, you know, it's up against Tampa. I mean, it wouldn't be crazy to see someone play Gesicki and Waddle and not play Tua. I mean, yeah, that's that's deranged, but you know what? Maybe we can do that because there, apparently there's just like this Outback Steakhouse situation. There's just no, we can do whatever we want here. All right, there we are. Lamar, Derek Henry, Daryl <laughs> Henderson, Bateman, Hardman, Shepard, Gesicki, oh. Waddle, and Cardinals defense. That is a team. I mean, is there any other defense below Cardinals defense that you think would be like obvious for people to play? Because if we just go from Cardinals down to someone else, we can move that waddle spot up to like 6,100. Like if we went to Giants, for example. But I don't think people are going to play the Giants. The Cardinals is such, such an obvious play. All right, we'll stick with that. Boom, million bucks for Pat Mayo. Shitter guy lineup. Winning some cash this week. Just That's need, a team. Just need Lamar to score four rushing touchdowns and we're good to go. Ben Raza, what do you got on the go over at awesomeo.com? Yeah, obviously we are a uh, one-stop shop for everything. NFL is going on, college football. The NBA has tipped off one of our favorite sports. We've got great deals going on and the ownership projections, all the tools that Alex and the team has developed. So you're going to have some fun betting, DFS, whatever. Stop on by, give it a try. You can check out all the shows on the Pat Mayo experience from the week. We got best bets with Pizzola and Cam on Friday, plus my injury update on Saturday live. I believe it's Laquan Jones this week doing the live show, 1130 a.m. Eastern time on Mayo Media Network. So subscribe to the channel, smash the like, and do all that good stuff. And use runthesims.com slash Mayo to get yourself a discount for the optimizer, the single game simulator, the prop simulator. You can run all of the slates 10,000 times and see what the optimal results are. And you can customize all the projections and target shares and snap shares and everything that goes along with it. So I highly recommend that you do that. Runthesims.com slash Mayo. Cheat sheet will be up on DK Nation on Friday, but you can get all the hot links in the newsletter. Please subscribe to that. It's free down in the comment section and the description right now. I'm Pat Mayo. Good luck this week. I'll see you next time. Mayo experience. Experience.